Hello and welcome to the LLG vlog. I'm Helen McGrath, Executive Director of Policy and Governance at LLG, and I'm joined by Dennis Hall, our bulletin editor. Hi, everyone. Is it cold enough for you today, Dennis? Oh, I'd say so. It's two degrees here in uh, County Durham. What's it like for you down there? It's four degrees, but it it feels a lot colder, I think. We're not used to it. Wow. (laughs) So it's been a it's been a little while since we sat down um, and did a vlog together, but there's plenty of new, uh, plenty of news going on in the sector, and of course Birmingham is very much in the news. So tell us what you know there. Well, yes, I, I still want to highlight what's happening with the Birmingham intervention. The appointment of commissioners at Birmingham has been in the news everywhere once again. But uh, there's, I've got a different slant on this, Helen. It's not just another intervention into a local authority by government commissioners. Take a look at the detail in the postings in this week's bulletin. Six commissioners have been appointed on this occasion, including two who are identified as political advisers. And the advent and the intervention is reported to last five years. And more than that, there is a formal direction requiring a full corporate strategic review, including of its legal services. Now, as far as I can recall, all of this makes this particular intervention highly exceptional in the way that the government has set about it. Helen. Mm. And of course, I I spoke on the podcast last week about the difficulties facing the MO and the local government uh, lawyer has reported that Birmingham City Council has accepted statutory recommendations made (laughs) by its external auditors. Um, including a call to commission in, an independent review of how it considers legal advice and whether its monitoring officer's advice was appropriately taken into account. So, And, of course, the second commissioner's report is now out in respect to Thurrock as well. Yes, <clears throat> so, indeed it is. <clears throat> um, I've been looking through the trade press to see what's going on. The MJ is reporting that uh, seven in 10 councils are struggling to support people hit by the cost of living crisis. Now, this is from a report by the University of York, who suggests that the government's long term uh, long term funding of the housing support fund could help to ease the situation. Now, Rob Whiteman, CEO of SITFA, he's been writing in the M- MJ to tell us that conditions um sorry, that council should consider how they can create and foster the right conditions in their area for market investment without the council taking on too much commercial risk in projects the market has decided are unviable. It also records the stepping down, of course, of Mark Lloyd as CEO from Mm -hmm. the LGA. Now, the local government lawyer covers the High Court legal challenge in respect of Dorset Council's use of migrant barge, uh, the migrant barge and factors around planning. And it also runs with the Secretary of State for the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities, Michael Gove, of course, stating that RAC mitigation funding for social housing should primarily come from rental income. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to cover it, Mm. but there you are. So, um, as always with you, Dennis, a sneaky peek at what's (laughs) coming up in bulletin number 36. Well, yes, uh, what's come to my attention, what I'm looking at now is the Local Government Act 1972. It was 50 years old this time last year, Helen. No particular fanfare for it then, of course, and we know which which bits of it really do need to change. But some things are nonetheless quite remarkable about the Act. The world has moved on dramatically since 1972, but think of the innovations, the structural changes, the new performance methods of management, service delivery changes, and ways of working that it has withstood and has been adapted to deal with. And remarkable too, that whilst our news is dominated nowadays by governance, by standards and by ethics, the original version of the 1972 Act makes reference to none of it. But talk of wide scale reform is now in the air. So what needs to be reformed for the future? There's a good starting point on this in the parliamentary research paper from Mark Sanford, published on the anniversary of the Act last year and which will be posted in bulletin number 36. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I know we've been, LLG have been in um, discussions with a number of stakeholders about the 72 Act and and what needs to be done in that regard. So um, there is momentum building, and I look forward to seeing that, um, reading that research paper. Indeed. Now, I understand you've got a little bit of positive news in the sector, Dennis, some good practice coming out. Well, yes. And again, I'd like to highlight the new large scale youth services initiative in Tower Hamlets. The borough's growing population has an average age of 30 
and it's the youngest in the country. And it has a child poverty uh, rate of 56%, which is the highest in London. With its surging population and rife child poverty, Tower Hamlet says its new £13.7 million funding package will pay off. It includes new investments co-developed within the community in youth centres and event programmes on a scale unheard of for many years. This is really local government getting to the heart of the matter. Take a look at the detail in Bulletin 35. Helen. Thank you, Dennis. That does sound re uh, really promising. And it'd be interesting to see the actual <laughs> impact that can make uh, down yes. the line. Um, so just to highlight, we do we do still have places on our governance conference, which is taking place in Sheffield on the 10th of November. And also <clears> with all the uh, discussions around disrepair and issues pertaining to that, you might want to attend our housing conference this Friday. That's the 20th of October. And in the meantime, for more detailed coverage of the bulletin entries, don't forget to listen to the Grapevine podcast. So it's goodbye from me. And from me too.